Cyprus is one of my favorite islands and countries in Europe that I love to the moon and back. This is the story of how I drove 1,500 kilometers literally all around the island, exploring its mountains, castles, ancient sites, religious monuments, beautiful nature, national parks, beaches, and so much more. It's very early morning. I just came to Nicosia, the capital of Cyprus, which is actually the only capital in the whole world that has a border. It's separated into two different parts, the Turkish part right there and the Greek part right here. Either way, I'm here with my new filmmaker, my boy, PJ. <laughs> First things first, we decided to explore more of Nicosia, the capital of Cyprus and world's only divided capital. Even though the city has lots of beautiful cafes, restaurants and other tourist attractions, the most striking thing was the border, literally in the heart of the old town. Having explored the Greek part of Nicosia, we hopped into our car and drove to Ayana, one of the most famous coastal cities of Cyprus that receives thousands of beach-loving tourists every single year. As beautiful as the town was, we certainly weren't going to spend our day on the beach and went somewhere a little bit more exciting. This place truly is a Cypriot paradise on earth, the one and only Sea Caves. It's a group of tall rock formations with deep caves inside them as well as crystal clear water all around. The legend has it that the caves were even used by pirates to store their riches. As amazing as the caves were, the sun was setting and it was time to check out another gorgeous place in the area, the pink salt lakes of Larnaca. So we were making our way towards uh, one of the biggest cities here in Cyprus and then on a random road, we saw this. It's a huge pink salt lake that looks so good. And they have all these reflections of, you know, the buildings and the, the hills and the, and, the, and the trees and stuff, it's insane. Apart from their beauty, the lakes are home to 85 species of water birds, among which are thousands of flamingos. Unfortunately, when we visited the lake, the flamingos had already emigrated someplace else, but nonetheless, the lake looked spectacular. The next morning, it was time to go off the grid, big time. We came to some sort of a no man's land here in Cyprus, and they have a very old mine here that apparently looks quite good. Uh, however, we're so remote, look at that. There's literally just one car there. That's our car. There's absolutely no human being around us right now. And it feels incredible, wow. This abandoned mine is called Kokkinogi, and even though it's not particularly old, it stands like the modern ghost of the 6,000 year old copper industry in Cyprus. You see, thousands of years ago, Cyprus used to be a lucrative center of copper production that provided enough metal for the whole of the Roman Empire. When the empire fell, the industry ground to a halt until the 19th century when Great Britain revived the mines, which once again closed very soon and have been sadly abandoned ever since. I'm at the very, very top right here. It's kind of scary, honestly, because uh, this thing seems to be so old and rusty and stuff. Look at these things. Jing, jing. Wow. <laughs> Then we once again hit the road and discovered another interesting place that most tourists will never visit. Uh, it's so strange that a place like this exists in Cyprus, but check this out. Apparently it's a huge red toxic lake. You cannot swim there, you obviously cannot drink from there because you die. And it's literally in the middle of these mountains, super hard to find, absolutely no tourists, completely empty. Crazy. As magnificent as the lake is, it really is incredibly high in acid, so going anywhere near it certainly isn't the best idea. That's why we spent a little bit of time admiring its beauty and hit the road again, this time into the mountains. And apparently it began raining really heavily. All these clouds came up. We can we can hardly see anything. We couldn't even see the mountain, even though it was there in the distance. So now we decided to turn back, go all the way back to the coast, and explore some other places, and hopefully come back to this mountain in maybe one or two days, because obviously it takes a very long time to come here. But uh, hey, you know, what can you do? 
As unfortunate as it was to not reach our destination for the day, we turned back and kept on exploring everything we could find, starting with a famous UNESCO World Heritage Site called Choirokoitya. The Neolithic settlement of Choirokoitya, occupied from the 7th to the 4th millennium BC, is one of the most important prehistoric sites in the eastern Mediterranean. Its remains and the finds from the excavations there have thrown much light on the evolution of human society in this region. Imagine this was someone's bedroom, someone's bathroom, someone's kitchen, someone's neighbor right there. <laughs> Then we continued driving west of the island until we came to one of the weirdest borders I'd ever seen in my entire life. Man, the, the borders in Cyprus are so weird. If you look at Google Maps right now, you will see that I'm standing literally at the border that separates Cyprus, which is here, from the United Kingdom, right here. So basically on that side, right here, this street is Cyprus, and this thing is the United Kingdom. So in a way, my right foot right now is in the United Kingdom, and my left one is in Cyprus. <laughs> this is so weird. Having unexpectedly found ourselves in the United Kingdom, we had to keep on going. Unfortunately, the roads ah! certainly weren't the best. Look at this, I don't even know if we can cross it. However, the British part definitely had some epic places to see, especially this amazing castle. Colossi Castle is a former crusader stronghold that held great strategic importance in the Middle Ages and contained large facilities for the production of sugar from the local sugarcane, one of Cyprus's main exports in that period. The original castle was built in 1210 by the Frankish military, but the present one was constructed in 1454 by the hospitaliers that hosted such famous people as King Richard the Lionheart, who even celebrated his wedding in the nearby city of Limassol. I'm at the very, very top, and apparently it feels really strange to be here because I think this is the only fort I've ever been to in my entire life. That's actually divided in two countries, because that right there is England, where they have the military base and everything, and that is Cyprus. As interesting as the castle was, it was time for something a little bit more active. The next morning, we finally got back into the mountains and drove all the way to the very, very top of Cyprus. We, uh, we finally reached the top of Cyprus at almost two kilometers above the sea level, which is why it's actually quite cold in here. Uh, technically, that place actually is the very top of Cyprus, but that's a military base, so they wouldn't let us through for some reason. Uh, but nonetheless, we get to enjoy, you know, these views. To be completely honest with you, I was hoping this could be like a you know, off the beaten track experience. However, there's so many Russians around, there's, there's ATMs, shops and everything. It's a very touristy area. Even though Mount Olympus was a little different from what I initially expected, but it still felt really good to be back in the mountains surrounded by gorgeous nature all around. It felt fresh and exciting. And once again, I guess this place is a great proof that Cyprus being such a small island, such a small country, has so many insane, insane places to offer. Um, just crazy. Wow. Then we spent quite a while hiking in the nearby forests toward one of the few waterfalls in Cyprus and took our car hundreds of kilometers across the coast until we reached a place of immense importance to the local Cypriots, the birthplace of the goddess of love, the Aphrodite's Rock. The next morning, we found ourselves surrounded by ancient history in Paphos Archaeological Park, one of the most important archaeological parks in the region that's been inscribed to UNESCO World Heritage List for its outstanding ancient remains. This is another reason why traveling around Cyprus is so incredible. You come to one of the most ancient places in the whole country and it's completely empty. <laughs> The park includes sites and monuments from the 4th century before Christ to the Middle Ages while most remains date to the Roman period. Among many other interesting remains, the intricate mosaic floors of four Roman villas form the impressive epicenter of the finds and depict various scenes from Greek mythology. Then we explored quite a bit of the gorgeous coastal areas of southern Cyprus and went swimming on a really 
really, really remote beach out in the wild until it was time to go to the north. We just went through the, um, the, the, the Greek checkpoint. Right now we're officially in the no man's land. It's a two kilometer long, um, I guess, area or something where that doesn't really belong to anyone. Quick status update, we uh, are finally at the border but apparently we cannot cross to the other side if we don't have the Turkish insurance or something like this. And they're supposed to be selling it at the border, but there's no one here and they, they're not sure when they're gonna come. So now we'll just have to wait maybe for 30 minutes, maybe for an hour, maybe for four hours, because that's literally the only thing we can do now. Luckily, the guy came sooner than we expected. We got our overpriced insurance and finally found ourselves in the northern part of Cyprus. Getting into the north was a very interesting experience because even though it's the same island, it did feel different. The currency was different, the people looked different, they spoke a different language and most of them were Muslims. However, some things still stayed the same. This church was the first place we visited in the northern part of Cyprus and it had a very long history as it was originally a Byzantine building built on the site of an Aphrodite temple. It has been reconstructed at various times over the centuries with most of the buildings dating to the 18th century when the large central dome was added. The place really did look incredibly beautiful. We were driving our car on a random road here in the north of Cyprus and then on our right we saw this. Turns out this place is called the Dagdera Water Reservoir and the fascinating thing about it is that most of its water actually comes from Turkey by a very long undersea pipeline. Eventually we made our way to the most famous city in the northern part of Cyprus called Kairenia where we met this bloody legend by the name of Al. Hey, uh... We're finally here with my brother Alp. Well, there's evidence showing that Kerenia has been populated since 5,000 years before Christ. It was formally established right after the Trojan War. These days, Kerenia is a cultural and economical center described as the tourism capital of the northern part of Cyprus. It is home to numerous hotels, nightlife, and a port, as well as three universities with a student population of around 14,000. We spent quite a bit of time walking around Kairenia and then Alp took us to his favorite restaurant for an absolutely incredible dinner. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> nice, can't wait to try. Do I yes. get the knife or no? Nope. Okay. No? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Bon appetit. Mm. Early next morning, with our stomachs still full, we decided to check out the castle of Kairenia, which is one of the largest castles in the whole island. Research carried out at the site suggests that the Byzantines built the original castle in the 7th century. By 1489, the Venetians had taken control of Cyprus and in early 16th century, they enlarged the castle, giving it its present day appearance. Walking around this incredible castle and seeing everything that's been preserved there felt incredible, just as checking out the views from the very top. What? <laughs> Wait. Look at that, bro. Look at the views. Crazy. Phew. Having shown us the castle, Alp took us to this unique mountain village called Karmi. This lovingly restored village is a very peaceful place with gorgeous views of the northern coastline that's mostly inhabited by British and German expats. What? Turns out that after the war, when all the Greek people moved out of the northern part, this village was left abandoned. And then the local government started leasing it out to hundreds of foreigners who wanted to stay there. As a result, these days the village has its own church, a few bistros, and even a British pub. As good as the day already was, we decided to go even higher into the mountains and eventually arrived to by far my favorite place in the northern part of Cyprus. Honestly, I absolutely can't believe the epicness of the place I just came to. It's so good, you won't believe it as well. You'll see it in one, two, three. <laughs> Look at that. 
The castle of St. Hilarion not only looks incredible, but also has a remarkable history. It was first constructed by the Byzantines to prevent the Arab pirates from raiding the coast. Then it was controlled by different rulers at one time, even becoming the focus of a four-year struggle between Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II and Regent John the Ibelin for control of Cyprus. These days, it still stands at the same place, enchanting everyone who gets to see it with their own eyes. I mean, just look at this place. Still excited from last night's views, the next morning we hopped into Alps 4x4 and went on an incredible road trip. We just came to a really famous uh, national park uh, here in the north called Carpas and apparently in this park they have over 400 wild donkeys uh, living here and right now we have three donkeys surrounding the car waiting for this. <laughs> Look at that. Crazy. Yeah, the hundreds of donkeys was definitely something I never expected to find in a national park in Cyprus, but it certainly made the experience even better, especially with incredible views like this. Just came to the northernmost point of all of Cyprus just by this, this epic water. And it's incredible because there behind me, if it was clear, you would be able to see Turkey and there on that side, if it was once again clear, you would be able to see Syria because they're literally just 50 and 60 kilometers away, something like that. We spent quite a bit of time exploring the nearby area and went to this gorgeous, gorgeous sunset spot. Then, on our way out of the national park, we faced such strong harassment from the local population, I almost couldn't take it. <laughs> Man, so many! So many of <laughs> them! <laughs> the next morning, we had a wonderful traditional breakfast and continued exploring. We just came to an incredibly beautiful beach here in the national park. Once again, it's completely empty. The water is so clear, it literally hurts my eyes. And of course, there's no way I can miss an opportunity to go swimming in a paradise like this. Let's go. As you know, I'm definitely not the biggest fan of spending time on the beach, but this place was so good, I definitely couldn't resist. I mean, could you? As awesome as it was to enjoy the gorgeous Cypriot nature, it was time to explore more of its ancient sites. Yeah, now we came to one of the oldest ancient city in Cyprus and you can see so many columns around it from the Roman times before the century. It's an interesting view. Yes, indeed. Super cool place and so awesome we get to experience it with my boy Alp. Mm -mm. The ancient city of Salamis dates back to thousands of years ago and as important as the city was, it unfortunately got destroyed and abandoned in the 7th century AD by the Arab conquerors. However, some prominent Roman actors still perform their ancient art. Now we're in the one of the ancient theater in Cyprus and normally here is not any performance more than 100 years, but today we have a special performance. To be or not to be. No. <sighs> Well, it's not the best performance, but I got here free, it's okay. Yeah, nah, the performances could definitely be improved, but hey, it's great someone's still doing them, you know? <laughs> then we spent a little bit of time exploring the ancient city of Famagusta and made our way back to Nicosia for our last day in Cyprus. The first place we visited was the main mosque of the city that's a former Roman Catholic cathedral converted into a mosque after the Cypriot War. Alp told me that the Selimia Mosque is the largest surviving historical building in Nicosia and according to sources, it may have been the largest church built in the Eastern Mediterranean in the millennium between the rise of Islam and the late Ottoman period. Not only that, it was the coronation church for the Lusignan kings of Cyprus. 
Then we thanked Alp for all the amazing hospitality he showed us, spent a bit more time walking around the streets of Nicosia and came to the place where it all started. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's already been 10 days since the start of our trip, which actually started right there on the other side of the border here in Nicosia. So right now we're in the northern side. Obviously when we started, we were in the southern side. And since then we've gone literally all around Cyprus in zigzags, uh, well over a thousand kilometers. And the trip has been, you know, incredible. And it's so weird that it's it's actually sort of gonna be over. Cause I really liked being here. The people were nice, the food was great, the locations were amazing, the weather is perfect. And even though we have to catch our flights really, really soon, but before that, I still want to do one last thing here in Cyprus that I've been dreaming of doing for the last few days. So, let's go. Now that's much better. This 1500 kilometer road trip took us literally all across the island of Cyprus, from tall mountains to lush forests, from big cities to villages, national parks and white sand beaches. We saw it all. I know that the country is certainly going through a rough period in its history with the obvious division in the center of it, but I'm very grateful for all the kindness and hospitality I received from the local people. I want to thank every wonderful Cypriot for hosting me on their gorgeous island and sharing its treasures with me. Thank you, the people of Cyprus. Your island truly is a paradise on earth.